welcome to science easy tech channel in this video we are going to discuss about digestion absorption and metabolism of carbohydrates already i have posted your video on carbohydrates its interaction sources classification functions recommended dietary allowances if you have not watched that video i have given the link in description box suggested in card or i card also you can watch our channel playlist nutrition for bsc nursing first year students before moving on to the topic if you are new to science easy tech channel just take a moment to subscribe our channel and also to press the notification bell icon in order to get connected with our latest updates let's move on to the topic carbohydrates digestion absorption metabolism and storage digestion of carbohydrates starts in the mouth itself so in the mouth the food will be mixed with saliva by means of chewing which is otherwise called as mastication chewing is otherwise called as mastication so the food will be mixing with saliva nicely and it will be forming a bolus so in saliva you have a special enzyme called salivary amylase or tyalin so this salivary amylase the other name is tyalin here p is silent that's why i am pronouncing it as tyalin this salivary amylase will be helping in carbohydrate digestion so this acts on glycogen starch and dextrins which are present where which are present in the food so this will be acting this salivary amylase which is otherwise called as tyalin will be acting on glycogen starch and dextrins and it will be forming disaccharides and maltose so this glycogen starch and dextrins these are all what polysaccharides which will be broken down to disaccharides as well as maltose so after mouth the food will be entering into the esophagus and then into the stomach the food will be mixing with the gastric secretions and gastric juices like hydrochloric acid and all here no chemical action will be taking place in the stomach only the food will become a creamy kind okay the food will become a creamy kind by mixing with the gastric secretions or gastric juices but there will not be any chemical digestion will be taking place in the stomach next this creamy chyme from the stomach will be moving into the small intestine so from stomach the chyme will be the creamy chyme will be entering into the duodenum in the duodenum once the food enters into the duodenum the pancreas will be stimulated and it will be secreting pancreatic amylase and other intestinal secretions which will be acting on the chyme so the pancreatic amylase and the intestinal secretions will be acting on the chyme so what happens the starch and dextrins in the presence of pancreatic amylase is converted to maltose this maltose in the presence of maltase in my many videos i have told that anything completing with ase is an enzyme in the presence of maltase enzyme is converted to glucose plus glucose molecule next is sucrose in the presence of sucrase enzyme is converted to glucose and fructose lactose in the presence of lactase enzyme is converted to glucose and galactose so starch and dextrins in the presence of pancreatic amylase is converted to maltose then maltose in the presence of maltase is converted to glucose plus glucose then mm, sucrose in the presence of sucrase is converted to glucose and fructose lactose in the presence of lactase is converted to glucose and galactose one thing i want to make you clear monosaccharides can be absorbed directly by the body monosaccharides can be absorbed directly by the body but only the disaccharides and polysaccharides needs to be digested and it should be broken down to monoglycerides for absorption for example glucose and all no directly it can be absorbed there is no need for further digestion because the end product of a carbohydrate digestion is a 
glucose something so if you are going to take directly glucose easily it is absorbed by the body and immediately you will be getting energy but uh, in case of disaccharides and polysaccharides they should be digested and then only they will go for absorption so they will be digested and they will be broken down to monoglycerides like a glucose something and it will be absorbed next in large intestine all the carbohydrates that leach the large intestine fermented by colonic microflora and it will be producing short chain fatty acids and gas so in large intestine all the carbohydrates which will be that is the fibers the undigested carbohydrate everything no they will be fermented by the colonic microflora and it will be colonic microflora and it will be producing short chain fatty acid and gas okay uh, which will be excreted in the feces okay which will be excreted in the feces next moving on to absorption of carbohydrates takes place by means of diffusion and active transport how the absorption will be taking place it will be taking place by means of diffusion and active transport so diffusion and active transport both uh, comes under osmosis only so what is diffusion it is also one type of osmosis so diffusion means this uh, particles will be moving from higher concentration to lower concentration so here the nutrients in your intestine which are going to be in higher concentration will be diffusing to blood and lymph where the uh, particles or where the constitution is very uh, less concentration of the nutrients is very less sorry okay so here the nutrients in intestine will be diffusing to blood and lymph where the concentration is going to be less so for this process it doesn't require any energy example fructose is absorbed by diffusion for this process no need of energy fructose or fruit sugar is directly absorbed by means of diffusion so one method of absorption is diffusion where the particles will be moving from higher concentration to lower concentration so by this method fructose is absorbed by means of diffusion and no energy energy or ATP is required for this process. Next method of absorption is I told active transport. Active means itself you need energy. So ATP is required for active transport. It requires energy or ATP as well as a carrier protein. Mostly the carrier protein here is lipoprotein. So the here the nutrients from lower concentration is moved to higher concentration. So for this you need energy or ATP and as well as a carrier protein. Example glucose and galactose are absorbed into the bloodstream by active transport fructose is absorbed by diffusion whereas glucose galactose and all know they need energy for uh, absorption into the bloodstream by means of active transport next is metabolism carbohydrate metabolism any metabolism mostly it takes place in the vital organ that is the liver in animals all the dietary carbohydrates are derived to or delivered to the cells as glucose so in animals all the carbohydrates will be converted into glucose and it will be um, moved in, into the cells for energy so for the cells to survive we need glucose as well as oxygen so each cell needs glucose or energy for its survival there are various metabolic pathways carbon fixation here carbon dioxide is reduced to carbohydrate what is carbon fixation here carbon dioxide is reduced to carbohydrate glycolysis glycolysis lysis means what break down what is glycolysis breakdown of glucose so here glucose is broken down to pyruvate and atp is released glucose is broken down to pyruvate where atp is also released that is energy then krebs cycle this pyruvate what we have got from glycolysis which will be entering into the krebs cycle in aerobic organism aerobic organism means organism which requires oxygen for its survival so this pyruvate from glycolysis enters the krebs cycle in aerobic organism and uh, this is called as a hmp pathway uh, okay this hexose in the presence of pentose phosphate which will be forming pentoses hexoses are converted to pentoses hexoses uh, are converted to pentoses plus there will be NADPH regeneration you will also get NADPH hexoses 
in the presence of pentose pathways pentose phosphate is converted to pentose where you will be getting NADPH regeneration so in metabolic pathways we have seen about carbon fixation glycolysis Krebs cycle and uh, HMP pathway Krebs cycle so um, to add on to the metabolic pathways glycogenesis genesis means formation or synthesis glycogenesis means formation of glycogen so excess glucose so excess glucose under what it happens means it is converted to glycogen and it is stored in the liver as well as muscle okay so excess glucose is converted to glycogen and it is stored in the liver and muscles so this process is called glycogenesis that's why even suppose if we are on starvation suppose today morning if i am not taking anything if i am not eating anything also my body will uh, will break down the glycogen which is stored in the liver and it will be giving glucose okay so the conversion of excess glucose into glycogen so which is utilized by the body in future use whenever it is necessary so that process is called as glycogenesis glycogenesis means formation of glycogen glycogenolysis as i have told you earlier if i am not going to eat my body immediately i will not faint or anything so my body will be using the reserved glycogen this reserved glycogen from the liver will be broken down to glucose and it will be giving energy to the cells and tissues glycogenolysis means breakdown glycogenolysis means breakdown of glycogen to form glucose which gives energy to cells and tissues next is gluconeogenesis that is neo means new genesis means formation gluco means glucose gluco formation of new glucose from simple organic components other than non carbohydrate sources that is you can also form glucose from protein you can also form glucose from fats so that is formation of glucose from non carbohydrate sources like proteins or fats is called as gluconeogenesis gluco means glucose neo means new genesis means formation all the metabolic pathways will be discussed detailedly in biochemistry classes storage so as i have told earlier the glucose is stored as glycogen in liver and muscles carbohydrates are stored as what i told glycogen so the carbohydrates are also can be converted excess carbohydrates if you are eating too much of sweets we are telling no you will become fat okay so that excess carbohydrates are converted to fatty acids by a complex cycle and it will be stored in adipose tissue excess carbohydrates will be converted to fatty acids and stored in adipose tissue hope this video has given you a detailed explanation about digestion absorption metabolism and storage of carbohydrates if you still have any doubts feel free to post your doubts in comment section a quick recap of what we have discussed by means of diagrammatic representation we can see now see digestion absorption of carbohydrates so mechanical digestion of starch which will be taking place in the mouth itself by means of salivary amylase or tyalin so here um, the starch will be broken down into disaccharides and maltose so here in esophagus also there is no chemical action and in st stomach also there is no chemical action only the mixing of food with the gastric juices will be forming a creamy kind okay then the food will be entering into the duodenum which will be making the pancreas to secrete pancreatic amylase this pancreatic amylase will be breaking down starch and dextrin into maltose okay some glucose is uh, so next uh, here the enzymes in the small intestine that is sucrase maltase lactase uh, galactase all these things will be broken down into sucrose maltose lactose uh, glucose fructose and galactose so the enzymes of small intestine break breaks the sucrose maltose and lactose into glucose fructose and galactose okay so once everything has happened so what is happening the undigested thing some gas uh, producing colonic bacteria will be acting on the undigested food and this will be most undigested fibers and all know will be excreted in the feces how the absorption is taking place see absorption of glucose and fructose and galactose takes place by means of diffusion and active transport and it will be taken to the liver in liver the metabolism of carbohydrates will be taking place by means of various pathways and the excess glucose is stored as glycogen in the 
liver. Hope this video gives a clear explanation about all the things and we have seen a quick recap also. So if you have any doubts as I have told earlier, you can post it in comment section. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up, share and subscribe to Science Easy Tech channel. My previous videos link I have given in description box, suggested in card and i card. You can watch it for more information. Thank you friends. Keep supporting to Science Easy Tech channel.